Synthetic's staking rewards contract is one of the most influential contracts in DeFi. So in this video, I'll explain what it is and the math behind it, and later on, we'll write some code. So first of all, what is it? The staking rewards contract is a contract where you earn rewards for staking a token. Let's say that there is a staking rewards contract. The owner of this contract will be able to set the rewards and the duration, the amount of reward to pay, and the duration that they're going to be paying. For example, let's say that this owner sets 1000 rewards that are to be paid out for the duration of one week. So the owner sets the rewards and sets the duration and sending the 1000 rewards. Once the owner sets the rewards and the duration, the users will be able to stake their token and start earning the rewards. For example, let's say that the user stakes 200 tokens into this contract. Besides this user, there are many users that have already staked their tokens inside this contract. So for this example, we'll say that the total amount of tokens that are staked is 2000 tokens. One week later, this user withdraws all of his tokens that he staked, 200 tokens. So he will get the 200 tokens back. And let's now calculate how many rewards this user has earned. This user staked 200 tokens out of the total of 2000 tokens that were there. The amount of reward tokens that is being paid out is 1000 tokens per week. And this user has staked it for one week. So we multiply this by one week. So this will be equal to 200 divided by 2000 is 1 over 10 times that by 1000. That will be 100 per week times it by one week and we get 100 rewards earned. So this was an overview of how the staking rewards contract worked. The owner of the contract sets the rewards and the duration and then sends the rewards token into the staking rewards contract. The users stake their token and over time the users will earn the reward tokens. In the previous video we looked at a simple example of how much rewards a user would earn. In this video I'm going to explain the two math equations that describe the amount of rewards that a user earns for staking. Let's start with some definition. I'll define a function named r that calculates the amount of rewards that was earned by a user. It takes in three inputs, u, k, and n, and it calculates the rewards earned by user u from the time k to n, and both k and n are in seconds. Next I'll define some variables. I'll say s sub i is equal to the amount staked by user u at time equals i. t of i is the total staked at time equals i, and here we'll assume that t of i is always greater than zero. And r is the reward rate per second. This will be the total rewards that is being paid out divided by the duration in seconds. With these variables defined, we can now write the equation for the function r that calculates the amount of rewards earned by the user. This will be equal to the sum from i equals k to n minus 1, s sub i divided by t of i multiply the reward rate r. What is this equation doing here? Well, for each second from i equals k, all the way up to n minus 1, we are calculating the percentage of token that is staked by this user. S sub i is the amount of tokens that is staked by this user, and t of i is the total amount of tokens staked by all of the user at times t equals i. We multiply this percentage by reward rate per second. This term here, S sub i divided by t of i times r, will give us the amount of rewards earned by this user in one second, and we sum this up for the duration from seconds i equals k to n minus 1. And that is how we calculate the amounts of rewards earned by the user u from seconds k to n. However, if you were to translate this equation into Solidity code, since it's running a for loop, there's a chance that it uses up too much gas. Luckily, there's another way to write the same equation that will use less gas. So let me show you how to write this equation in another way, and that will be the equation that is used inside the staking contract. Consider the case where s sub i, remember that s sub i is the amount of stake by user u at time equals i, is a constant s from times t equals k to n minus 1. In this case, we can simplify this equation. Assuming that s sub i is a constant from i equals k to n minus 1, we can pull out this s sub i out of this summation, and we get this equation over here. The rewards earned by user u from times k to n will be equal to s is a constant that we pulled out from the right of this summation, and we get s times the summation from i equals k to n minus 1 multiplied by the reward rate r divided by the total stake that time equals i. Let's simplify this equation one more step. Notice that summing from i equals k to all the way up to n minus 1 
is the same as summing from i equals 0 all the way up to n minus 1, and then subtracting the terms all the way from i equals 0 to k minus 1. And this is the final equation that is being used by the staking contract to calculate the amount of rewards earned by the user. Inside the staking contract, this part is stored in a variable called reward per token. Every time r, reward rate per second, or the total amount staked changes, this will be updated. This value on the right will be stored in a mapping called user reward per token pay. This value will be stored for each user, and anytime a user deposits or withdraw, this value will be updated. By keeping track of these two values, the staking contract will be able to efficiently compute the amount of rewards earned by the user. In the next video, we'll go through some examples of calculating how much rewards a users have earned using this formula over here. Let's go through an example of how many rewards a user earns by using this equation. For this example, we'll say that Alice stakes 100 tokens for 3 seconds. And using this formula, we'll calculate how many rewards earned by Alice. On a graph, the y-axis represents the total state, and the x-axis represents time in seconds. Let's say that at 3 seconds, Alice stakes 100 tokens, and then at 6 seconds, she withdraws all of her tokens. So in total, she staked 100 tokens for the duration of 3 seconds. Let's calculate how many rewards Alice has earned in this 3 seconds. And we'll be using this equation to calculate how many rewards Alice has earned. At 3 seconds, Alice had 100 shares, so that will be 100. The total stake by all users is also 100. This will be just Alice. We times this by the reward rate per second, R. And that is the amount of rewards that Alice has earned from 3 seconds to 4 seconds. From 4 seconds to 5 seconds, the amount of tokens staked by Alice is also 100. The total staked by all users is just Alice, so this will be again be 100. And the reward rate will be still be R. So that will be the amount of rewards earned by Alice from 4 to 5 seconds. And lastly, from seconds 5 to 6, again the amount staked by Alice is still 100, and the total is also 100, so that will be 100 over 100 multiplied by R. We add all of these terms up, and this is equal to 3R. 100 over 100 times R is just simply R. Again, for the second term, 100 over 100 is 1. 1 times R is R. And the same for the last term. Adding 3 R's, we get 3 R. So 3 R is the amount of rewards that Alice gets for staking 100 token for 3 seconds. Let's look at another example. Alice stakes 100 tokens for 4 seconds, and Bob stakes 200 tokens for 5 seconds. Let's calculate how many rewards are earned by Alice. Here's the graph showing how much tokens were staked by each user and the duration they were staked for. At 3 seconds, Alice stakes 100 token. At 5 seconds, Bob stakes 200 tokens. And at 7 seconds, Alice withdraws the 100 token. And at 10 seconds, Bob withdraws his 200 tokens. Let's calculate how much rewards are earned by Alice. At 3 seconds, Alice had 100 tokens staked, so that would be 100. The total amount staked at 3 seconds is also 100, so that will be 100 over 100. We times this percentage by the reward rates per second, so that will be by times it by R. That's the amount of rewards earned by Alice for 1 second from seconds 3 to 4. At 4 seconds, the amount of rewards staked by Alice is also 100, and the total staked is also 100. Again, we multiply this by R. So between 4 seconds and 5 seconds, Alice has earned 100 over 100 times R amount of tokens. However, at 5 seconds, the amount of stake by Alice is still the same, 100. So that will be 100 over the total stake by all users. At 5 seconds, Bob stakes 200. 100 plus 200 is 300. So the total stake is 300. Times this by the reward rate per seconds are and that is the amount earned by Alice at 5 seconds. At 6 seconds, Alice still has 100 staked. The total staked by all users, Alice and Bob, are still 300. So we add another 100 over 300 multiplied by R. At 7 seconds, Alice withdraws, so she is no longer earning any rewards. So this is the total amount earned by Alice. Let's now simplify this. This is equal to 100 over 100 simplifies to 1. And the same goes for the second term. 100 over 300 simplifies to 1 over 3, so this will be 1 over 3. 
In the last term, 100 over 300 again simplifies to 1 over 3. Let's add all of these up. The first two terms will be r plus r. So that will be 2r plus, the last two terms are 1 over 3r plus 1 over 3r. So that will be two of those. So this will be 2 over 3r. Let's simplify this one more step. 2r is equal to 6 over 3r. 6 over 3r plus 2 over 3r is 8 over 3r. So the amount of rewards earned by Alice first taking 100 token from seconds 3 to 7 is 8 over 3r. Those are two examples of calculating the amount of rewards earned by a user using this equation. In the next video, we'll go over an example of calculating the amount of rewards earned by a user using this equation. We saw an example of how to calculate rewards earned by a user using this formula. Next, I want to show you an example of calculating rewards earned by a user using this formula. However, before I do that, I first want to rewrite this equation so that when we go through an example of using this equation, the calculations will be easy. In particular, in this video, I want to prove two formulas. We define rj to be the reward per token from time i equals 0 all the way up to j minus 1. In certain cases, this equation can be simplified to this equation. So we'll prove this, and also we'll prove that summing from i equals k all the way up to n, summing once, is equal to n minus k plus 1. Using this fact, we'll derive this equation. So first, let's start with proving this equation. Let's define the summation of reward per token up to time j. For j equals 0, we'll say r of 0 is equal to 0. And for j greater than 0, we'll say r of j is equal to the summation from i equals 0 all the way up to j minus 1, summing the terms r divided by t of i. t of i is equal to the total state that time i. Now, when t of i is equal to some constant t for the time duration j of 0 to j, then we can write this formula as r of j is equal to r of j 0 plus r divided by t times the duration j minus j 0. Let's prove this formula. We will start with r of j from the definition that we defined over here. r of j is equal to the summation from i equals 0 to j minus 1 summing the terms r divided by t of i. Next, we will split the summation into two parts. We sum from i equals 0 to j0 minus 1. And then next, we sum from i equals j0 to j minus 1. All we're doing here is rewriting this summation into two parts. Summing from i equals 0 to j0 minus 1. And then summing from i equals j0 to j minus 1. By definition, the first summation is equal to r of j of 0 plus... For the second summation, notice that t of i from i equals j0 to j minus 1 is a constant t. This is because we said over here that t of i is equal to a constant t for the duration j0 to all the way up to j. So, for this summation, t of i is a constant. This means that from this summation, we can pull out r divided by t, and we get this summation. Pulling out each of the terms inside the summation, to the left of the summation, we get r divided by t and summing 1 from i equals j of 0 to j minus 1. Next, we'll simplify this part of the equation. Summing from i equals j of 0 to j minus 1, adding 1s. Well, in the general case, when we sum 1 from i equals k to all the way up to n, we get that this sum is equal to n minus k plus 1. We'll prove this formula later in the video. Let's apply this equation to this summation. Here we start with an n, so n will be j minus 1, so that will be j minus 1. Next, we'll need to subtract k, k is over here, and k over here will be j of 0. So that will be minus j of 0, and lastly, we add a 1, so plus 1. Therefore, this summation will be equal to j minus 1 minus j 0 plus 1. Finally, we simplify this equation one last step, and we get this is equal to r of j of 0 plus r over t, and this summation will be equal to j minus 1 minus j0 plus 1, or simply this will be equal to j minus j0. And we have proven the fact that the reward per token r of j is equal to the summation from i equals 0 to j minus 1, adding the terms r divided by t of i, and when t of i is equal to some constant t in the interval j of 0 to j, then we can write this formula 
as rj equals to rj0 plus r over t times the duration j minus j0. In the next example, when we calculate the amount of rewards earned by a user, we will need to compute this equation. But instead of calculating this, we will use this formula. So for the next part of the video, I'll prove this formula. Adding ones from i equals k to i equals n, this is equal to n minus k plus 1. Let's see why. Let's start with some simple examples and try to find a pattern for the summations. When we sum 1 from i equals k to k plus 1, we're basically counting these vertical ticks from k to k plus 1. So that would be k and k plus 1. So 1 plus 1 equals to 2. How about summing from i equals k to k plus 2? Again, we're counting the number of vertical ticks from k to k plus 2. So that will be 1, 2, and 3. And the summation is equal to 3. And likewise, when we count the number of these vertical ticks up to k plus 3, then that will be 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we get the summation from i equals k to k plus 3 is equal to 4. So here, observe the pattern that if we sum to k plus 1, then our summation is equal to 2. When we sum up to k plus 2, then our summation is equal to 3. And when we sum up to k plus 3, then our summation is equal to 4. Notice that the sum is always 1 greater than what we're summing up to, starting from k. In general, we observe that when we sum up to k plus i, then the sum is equal to i plus 1. When we sum 1 from i equals k to k plus i, then the total that we get back is i plus 1. When we continue this step all the way up to n, then what is this summation? What is the sum summing from i equals k all the way up to n? Well, in order to apply this observation to this equation, let's write n in terms of k. So notice that n is equal to k plus n minus k. Likewise over here, we'll rewrite n as k plus n minus k. K. Now observe that we can apply this formula to this equation. When we sum all the way up to k plus i, then we get that the total is equal to i plus 1. So here we will replace the i with n minus k. And this will be equal to, we replace the i that we see over here with n minus k. So that will be n minus k. And to that we add a 1. So plus 1. And that is our final result. Summing 1 from i equals k all the way up to n is equal to n minus k plus 1. And we got here by applying this formula. And that completes the proof for proving that reward per token, this summation r of j equals to from i equals 0 to j minus 1, summing r over t of i. When t of i is a constant in some duration j of 0 to j, then we can rewrite this formula in a simpler form being r of j of 0 plus r over t times the duration j minus j0. In the next video, we'll go over an example of calculating the rewards earned by users. And instead of using this formula, we'll be using this formula. Let's go over an example of calculating the amount of rewards earned by a user using this equation. Here's the graph of amount of tokens staked over some time period. For this example, we'll say that Alice stakes 100 token at 3 second, a 5 second Bob stakes 200, at 6, Carol stakes 100, at 9, Alice withdraws her 100, and at 10, Carol stakes an additional 100 tokens. At 11, Bob withdraws his 200, and at 13, Carol withdraws her 200 tokens. Every time a user, either Alice, Bob, or Carol stakes or withdraws, we'll need to calculate this value. To make our life easier, we'll introduce some variables. We'll define reward per token at time j. R0 is equal to 0. And for time greater than 0, we'll say rj is equal to the sum from i equals 0 to j minus 1, summing the terms r divided by t of i, where t of i is the total stake that time i. Now, if the total stake that time i is equal to 0, then we'll just say this term is equal to 0. What we're doing here is defining this part of the equation for each second. However, instead of calculating this formula, we'll use this formula that we have derived in the previous video. And just for a review, when t of i is equal to some constant t, let's say for the duration j of 0 to j, then we can write this formula 
rj to be equal to rj of 0. So the reward per token evaluated at j of 0 plus r divided by t times the duration j minus j0. Okay, so let's go over an example of calculating rewards earned by each user. On the left hand blue, we'll list the time at which a user either staked or withdrew the tokens. On the right of this white vertical line, we'll calculate rj for each second. Now, every time a user deposits or withdraws their token, we'll have to keep track of this part of the formula for each user. So, we'll keep track of user reward per token pay on the right. And anytime the amount of tokens staked by each user changes, we'll calculate the amount of rewards earned by that user. At the very bottom, we'll keep track of amount of rewards earned by each user. Okay, let's get started. At time zero, what is reward per token? By definition, at time zero, the reward per token is equal to R0. So it will be simply be equal to R0 equals zero. Let's see what happens at three seconds. At three seconds, Alice stakes 100 token. So let's compute RJ at three seconds. Again, instead of using this formula, we'll be using this formula. Rj at 3 seconds, so that would be Rj at 0. The previous time that reward per token was updated was at R0. So Rj at 0 will be equal to R0. To this, we add R divided by t. But remember that for the duration from 0 to 3 seconds, the total stake was 0. And we said over here that when total stake is equal to 0, we'll just say that this part of the term is equal to 0. So this will be 0 times the duration times the duration from 0 to 3 seconds, 3 minus 0. And this is equal to R0 plus 0 times 3 minus 0. R0 is equal to 0. And 0 times 3 minus 0 is 0. This is equal to 0. R3 is equal to 0. Since Alice staked 100 tokens, we'll also update user reward per token paid. So this will be equal to R3. Okay, moving on, let's see what happens at time 5. At 5 seconds, Bob stakes 200 tokens. So let's compute Rj for 5. So this will be R5. This is equal to the previous reward per token will be R3, R3 plus now notice that for the time seconds 3 to 5 seconds, the total stake is 100, which is greater than 0. So instead of saying 0, we'll apply this part of the formula. So that will be R divided by the total stake for the time interval 3 to 5 seconds will be 100. So I'll divide this by 100. And what is the duration? The duration is from 3 to 5 seconds. So this will be 5 minus 3. And this is equal to R3 is 0. So 0 plus R divided by 100 times the duration 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. R5 is equal to 2R over 100. Now 5 seconds, this was Bob who staked 200 tokens. So we will also update user reward per token paid for Bob to be equal to R5. Okay, let's move on. At 6 seconds, Carol stakes 100 tokens. So let's compute Rj at 6 seconds. Rj at 6 seconds, R6. This is equal to the previous reward per token will be R5 plus the reward rate R over what is the total stake between the time intervals 5 and 6? Between the intervals 5 and 6, the total stake was 300. So this will be total stake will be 300. The duration will be from 5 to 6 seconds. So this will be 6 minus 5. And this is equal to R5 is 2R over 100. Plus, we need to add this term. So, plus r over 300 times the duration 6 minus 5 is equal to 1. So, that will be 1. And that is r6. This was Carol who deposited 100 tokens. 
So let's update user reward per token paid for Carol. And we'll say that this is R6. Let's scroll up and see what happens at nine seconds. At nine seconds, Alice withdraws 100 token. Okay, so let's compute rewards per token at nine seconds. R9 is equal to the previous reward per token will be R6 plus reward rate R over the total staked from time six to nine, the total staked from times six to nine was 400. So the total staked will be 400. And the duration will be from six to nine seconds. So we'll multiply by the duration nine minus six. And this will be equal to R of six is this value over here. R over 400 times the duration 9 minus 6, which is equal to 3. This was Alice who withdrew 100 of her token, so let's update user reward per token paid. The new user reward per token paid for Alice is R9. And we'll cross out the previous user reward per token for Alice being R3. Now, using this equation, let's compute the amount of rewards earned by Alice when she's staked from 3 seconds and then she withdrew at 9 seconds. So, I'll scroll down and let's compute the amount of rewards earned by Alice for the time duration from 3 to 9 seconds. The amount of rewards that Alice staked is 100 and if I scroll up, at this point, the reward per token is 9, so that will be R9 and user reward per token paid before R9, that will be this value, is R3. So what we need to do over here is R9 minus R3. Let's write this down over here. So we multiply 100 by R9, that's the current reward per token, minus the previous reward per token, specifically to Alice, this is user reward per token paid, is R3. And this is equal to 100 times, what is R of 9? R of 9 is this value. So I'll paste it here. And what is R of 3? R of 3 is equal to 0. So over here, we'll say minus R of 3 is 0. And that is the amount of rewards earned by Alice for staking from 3 to 9 seconds. Alice has staked 100 tokens. And for the first two seconds, she was the only one who has staked the tokens, so we divide by 100. For the next 1 second, in total there was 300 staked, and for the last 3 seconds there was 400 staked. When we add these up, we get the amount of tokens earned by Alice for staking from 3 to 9 seconds. Okay, let's scroll up and see what happens at 10 seconds. At 10 seconds, Carol stakes additional 100 tokens. This means that the amount of tokens staked by Carol from the duration 6 to 10 is a constant of 100. And now she has staked the additional 100. So from here on, she'll be staking 200 tokens. So what we'll do here is we'll compute the amount of rewards earned by Carol from the duration 6 to 10 seconds. And then update the user reward per token pay that we see over here. Okay, so first let's compute R10. R10 is equal to the previous reward per token is R9 plus the reward rate R over what is the total stake from the duration 9 to 10 seconds. If I scroll up, we can see that the total stake from the duration 9 to 10 seconds is 300. So we divide this R by 300 and the duration will be from 9 to 10 seconds, 10 minus 9. And this will be equal to the previous reward per token, R9, is this formula, plus R over 300 for the duration 10 minus 9, that will be 1. And that will be R of 10. Let's update user reward per token paid for Carol. So this will be R10. And we'll cross out the previous user reward per token paid for Carol. And let's compute the amount of rewards earned by Carol. Again, we'll be using this formula. The current reward per token is R of 10. And the previous user reward per token paid will be this value. And for Carol, that will be R of 6. So here, we'll have to do S, the amount of tokens staked by Carol, 
from the duration from 6 to 10 is 100, so S will be 100. The current reward per token will be R10 minus the previous user reward per token paid for Carol will be stored as R6. So 100 times R10 minus R6. So I'll scroll down and we'll calculate the amount of rewards earned by Carol. This will be 100 times the current reward per token is R10. And the previous user reward per token paid for Carol is R6. So here we'll do R10 minus R6. Let's calculate what this value is. So this will be equal to 100 times R10 will be this value minus R6. R of 6 will be this value. So this is R of 6 and we'll need to put a minus. So I'll put a minus here and change the plus to a minus. And let's simplify this equation. I see a 2R over 100 here minus 2R over 100. They cancel out. I also see 1R over 300 canceling out with minus 1R over 300. And what are we left with? We're left with 100 times whatever that is left inside. This will be 3R over 400 plus 1R over 300. And this will be the amount of rewards earned by Carol at time equals to 10 seconds. Okay, let's scroll up and compute R11. At 11 seconds, Bob withdraws 200 tokens. So we'll calculate rewards per token at 11 seconds and also calculate the amount of rewards earned by Bob. Let's start with reward per token at 11 seconds. So R11 is equal to the previous reward per token will be R10 plus the reward rate R over what is the total amount of tokens staked from the duration 10 to 11. Scrolling up from 10 to 11, there were 400 staked. So this will be 400 for the duration from 10 to 11. So 11 minus 10 and this will be equal to R10 will be this value. To R10, we add R over 400 from the duration 11 minus 10. So that will be 1. And that is R11. Now this was Bob who withdrew his tokens. So let's update user reward per token paid for Bob. The user reward per token paid for Bob is R11. And I'll cancel out the previous user reward per token paid for Bob. Okay, let's calculate the amount of rewards earned by Bob so far. The amount of tokens staked by Bob was 200 tokens from time 5 to 11. Using this formula, the current reward per token will be stored in R11. The previous time Bob either staked or withdrew the token is stored at R5. So the amount of rewards earned by Bob will be 200, the amount staked by Bob. The current reward per token, R11, minus the previous time Bob either staked or withdrew the tokens, will be stored at 5, so that will be R5. So, scrolling down, I'll move Carol's calculation further down. And inside the space that we just created, we'll put our calculation for Bob. The amount staked by Bob is 200 tokens. If I scroll up, We'll need to minus R11 from R5. So scroll back down, multiply 200 by R11 minus R5. And this will be equal to 200 multiplied by R11. R11 is this value over here. Minus R5. Scroll up. And R5 is simply 2R over 100. So minus R5 being 2R over 100. Okay, let's simplify this equation. I see a 2R over 100 over here, minus 2R over 100. So the amount of rewards earned by Bob is 200 times whatever that is left inside here. So that will be these values. And that is the amount of rewards earned by Bob. Okay, let's scroll up. What happens at 13 seconds? At 13 seconds, Carol withdraws 200 token. So again, we'll calculate reward per token at 13 seconds and minus the last user reward per token for Carol. And that will give us the amount of rewards earned by Carol from the duration 10 to 13. So I'll scroll down and let's calculate reward per token at time 13. R of 13 is equal to previous reward per token plus R over the total stake from the duration 11 to 13 
The total stake from duration 11 to 13 is 200. So R over 200 times the duration 13 minus 11. And this will be equal to R11 is this value. And to this, we add R over 200 for the duration 13 minus 11 will be 2. This was Carol who withdrew her tokens. So let's update user reward per token for Carol. Scrolling up, you'll say that the latest user reward per token pay for Carol is R13 and cross out the previous user reward per token pay for Carol. Okay, finally, let's compute the amount of rewards earned by Carol from the duration 10 to 13. I'll scroll up and the amount of tokens staked by Carol from the duration 10 to 13, we can count the number of boxes and it is 200. So, scrolling back down, so the total stake by Carol from the duration 10 to 13 will be equal to the total stake in that duration by Carol, 200, times the current reward per token, that will be R13, minus the previous user reward per token paid for Carol, and this will be R10. So I'll scroll down, and from R13, we minus R10. And that is the amount of rewards earned by Carol from the duration 10 to 13. Let's calculate what this reward turns out to be. So this will be equal to 200 times, what's R13? R13 is this value minus R10. Scroll up again. And R10 is this value over here. Scroll down. We will need to minus this value from the top. So I'll put a minus here and then replace the plus with a minus for all the terms. The top is R13 and the bottom is R10. Okay, let's simplify this equation. I see a 2R over 100 minus 2R over 100, 1R over 300 minus 1R over 300, 3R over 400 minus 3R over 400, and 1R over 300 minus 1R over 400. So simplifying this equation, we get this is equal to 200 times whatever that is left inside here is 1R over 400 plus 2R over 200. And that is the final amount of rewards earned by Carol for staking 200 tokens from the interval 10 to 13 seconds. This completes the example for calculating rewards earned by user using this equation. In the next video, we'll summarize what we just did and we'll come up with an algorithm for calculating the rewards earned by user using this equation. Let's come up with an algorithm that calculates the amount of rewards earned by a user when they stake or unstake. First, we'll start by writing some comments and then later we'll add some pseudocode. If we remember from the example from the previous video, the first thing that we did when a user staked or withdrew was calculate the reward per token. So here I'll put a comment calculate reward per token. Once we calculate the current reward per token, then we can calculate the amount of rewards earned by a user. So I'll type calculate reward earned by user. What else did we do? We updated the user reward per token paid. So I'll type update user reward per token paid. Now if we scroll up, you can see here that every time we calculated a new reward per token, we had to know the last time the reward per token was calculated. So for example here, to calculate reward per token at 10 seconds, we had to know that the last time it was calculated was at 9 seconds. So over here, we'll need to keep track of the time, the last time reward per token was updated. Update last update time. And the last thing that we'll do is update the amount of tokens staked by user. So type update stake amount. Okay, let's now write some pseudocode. Let's start off with calculate reward per token. Let's say that the current reward per token is stored in a variable, we'll name it R. And to calculate the reward per token, to this current reward per token, we'll need to add the reward rate R divided by the total amount of token staked in the contract. We'll say that this is stored in a variable named total 
supply. And then we'll need to multiply this by multiply this by the duration. The duration will be the current time minus the last time Warper token was updated. And we'll say that this is stored in some variable name last update time. And this step is how we update the reward per token. Next, let's calculate the reward earned by user. We'll say that the total amount earned by the user will be stored in some mapping. We'll name it rewards. And this will be stored per user. So this will be a mapping from user to the amount of rewards earned by the user. And to this mapping, we'll need to add the amount of rewards earned. So this will be plus equals for this part, we'll be using this equation. So I'll scroll down. The current amount of tokens staked by the user, we'll say that it is stored in a mapping balance of user. And to this, we'll need to multiply by the current reward per token minus the user reward per token paid. Multiply this by the current reward per token, that will be R minus we'll say that the user reward per token paid is stored in a mapping called user reward per token paid and this will be stored per user so we'll need to access the user and this completes the step where it calculates the amount of rewards earned by the user next we'll update the user reward per token paid so we'll need to update this mapping user reward per token paid so i'll copy this paste it here and say user reward per token paid for the user is equal to the current reward per token that we calculated in the first step. So this will be equal to R. Next, we'll update the last update time. Last update time, let's say that is stored in a variable named last update time. And this will be equal to, we set it to the current time. So type current time. And the last step is to update the staked amounts. The amount staked by a user is stored in a mapping balance of user. And depending on whether the user stakes or withdraws, this will be plus or minus equals to the amount that they are either staking or withdrawing. I'll put a comment here, plus on staking and minus on withdrawal. Okay, and the last step is to update total supply. Total supply is the total amount of token staked by all users. Total supply plus or minus, again plus if a user is staking and minus if a user is withdrawing. Plus or minus equals the amount that they are either staking or withdrawing. Okay, and that completes the algorithm for calculating the amount of rewards earned by a user and this code will be executed every time a user stakes or withdraws.